Hey guys, so I uh, wasn't able to get into office hours yesterday, so I figured I'd get you guys started with the homework with uh, some videos here. And I wanted to start out with just doing a brief intro to finite state machines. So all the work that you guys have been doing all quarter is culminating with finite state machines. This is, if you've understood K-maps, you've understood truth tables and just logic design in general, if, you, you know, if you've been on top of it with flip-flops and memory devices, and this is all a breeze, because this isn't really anything new. <clears throat> it's just a, a model at looking at uh, how to model some machines. So, <clears throat> what we say is, uh, you know, we've, we've designed some nifty logic circuits in lab and in class, um, but how do we build real logic devices? How do we build, like, an iPhone or, like, our computers? Well, unfortunately, you're not that advanced yet, but this is where you start with it. You call it a finite state machine. And the whole theory behind this is just that whatever machine you're trying to look at is able to exist in a finite number of states. So the classic example that um, I like going over, which we'll actually go over here, is an uh, example of the turnstile. Um, <laughs> turnstile is something that most of you should have seen at some point in your life, and it, uh, it's a really nice finite state machine problem. Um, but before getting into that, I just want to introduce, uh, when we're looking at finite state machine problems, there's two types of finite state machines that you'll hear people refer. Um, the first type is more type, the second type is mealy type. Um, now, we'll see what these mean when we get deeper into this, but the technical definition of a more type finite state machine is that the output is determined by the current state, and the technical definition for a mealy type is that the output is determined by the current state and the input. Uh, it may not mean a whole lot just yet, but when we actually get into designing these things, you'll see it actually produces some slight differences um, in how you go about the problem, but they're not really easier, easier or harder or better or worse. It just depends on what kind of machine you're trying to do. It might lend itself to being a more type versus a mealy type. Um, in general, in this class, you guys really like the mealy types. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys to that. And uh, we're going to look at an example of a turnstile. Um, this won't be the whole process. This will just be the important part of the process. And in some other videos, I'll go over the whole, all the nitty details of, of how to do this. But the basic idea, um, <laughs> if you haven't seen a turnstile, go ahead and Google it. Look up the Wikipedia page. Um, look up Google Images. Um, Turnstiles are the things where before you get on the subway, or before you get on a roller coaster, or um, when you go to the gym over at Mali, because uh, all you engineers are working out all the time, uh, right, you know, they swipe your access card, and then there's that little metal bar, it's got like the three bars that come out of it, and it turns, right, after you swipe your access card. That's the turnstile. And we can model this pretty easily, actually, as a finite state machine. We say the turnstile has two states. We've got a finite number of states. So we've got state one, and we've got state two. Wrong way. There we go. All right. State one and state two. So let's think about the different states that a turnstile has. It's got locked and unlocked, right? It's either turning or it's not turning. Okay, so we'll call this one locked, and we'll call this one unlocked. Cool. So we've got our two states. It's about half the work right there. <laughs> okay, now that we know we have two states, now we need to see how is this system going to respond to different inputs. So I tell you that I want you to design me a turnstile such that when it turns, it outputs a 1. When it's not turning, it outputs a 0. And the only time it's going to turn is when you swipe your access card. Simple as that. So we say, okay, let's call swiping our access card a 1. So we'll say uh, card, I can spell. Swiping your access card is a 1. Okay? <laughs> um, and if we don't swipe our card, it's a 0. So let's think about this. If we are currently locked, if our turnstile is locked, and we don't swipe our card, we don't do anything to this system, do we want it to stay locked or do we want it to unlock? Well, let's think, if we haven't done anything to the system, right, 
uh, we only want it to unlock when we swipe our card. So if we haven't swiped our card, we want to stay locked. So we say, if you're locked and you receive no input, then you're going to stay locked, you're going to loop back around, and you're going to output a zero. That's a zero. So, this first number here is our input, the second number here is our output. And this is uh, for designing a mealy type turnstile. Um, it would be pretty much the same, but slightly different for more type. Um, okay, well, so now let's look. <laughs> let's say we're locked, but we do swipe our card. What's going to happen? Well, I told you that I wanted you to design this such that when you swipe your card, it unlocks. So, we swipe our card, which means we input a 1. We input a 1. And then I said that I want you to output a 1 when you unlock. So, we're going to output a 1 as well. Okay? But we haven't covered all the cases yet. Now we need to come over to unlocked. We need to say, okay, if we're unlocked and someone swipes a card, we want to stay unlocked, right? That's the whole point of swiping the card. So if we're unlocked and you swipe a card, loop back around, stay unlocked, your input was 1 because you swiped a card, and your output is 1 because that's how you're designing this, that it outputs a 1 when you're unlocked. Okay, and we've got one more case to deal with. What if we're unlocked and we don't receive any input? Well, nobody swiped their card or anything, so we better go back to locked, right? So, no input, and we're not unlocked, so we output a zero. And so this would be your state diagram for your mealy type finite state machine. <laughs> um, it's pretty simple. And from here, you could get everything else that you need about this circuit. You can get the truth table, the state table, you can get the state assignment table, you can get your circuit and everything. Um, and so you can see that this is not really a difficult process. And the nice thing is that if you understand how to do this, 100% of these problems are exactly the same. This is all exactly the same, which is super nice. Now, one more uh, piece of information that will be good to know before you get into the homework is we've got two states here, which means we need one D flip-flop. So the way to think about this, or the way that I like to think about this, is back when we were studying multiplexers, we had some really common multiplexers. We had a 2 to 1 and a 4 to 1 multiplexer. And we saw that for the 2 to 1 multiplexer, we needed one select line. But for the 4 to 1 multiplexer, we needed two select lines. And that's because the whole point of the select line is to select which of these we want to pass through, right? Well, if we only are trying to switch between two values, one select line can do that, right? Because one bit can take on the values 0 or 1. There we go, 0 or 1. So one bit can take on two values. So when we get to four variables, we now need two bits, because two bits can take on four values. Uh, yeah, four values, right? 0, 1, 2, and 3. Cool. So it's the exact same logic when we're dealing with how to implement our finite state machines, right? If we need two states, then we need one D flip-flop. All of these designs are going to be with D flip-flops unless you're told otherwise. So the equation you're going to be going to is um, it's this right here. 2 to the x is the number of D flip-flops you need, and x is the number of states. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, here we go. There we go. X equals number flip-flops. Perfect. Okay. Uh, 2 to the x equals the number of states, and x is the number of flip-flops that you need. So we can see, for this case, we have 2 to the x equals 2. Well, it's pretty clear. X equals 1. And that's 
basically everything you need to know to be able to design a finite state machine. So um, I'll send out some other videos explaining how to actually go through the homework problems.